Welcome to Anglicare Church to You. And welcome to today's service recorded at St. James Chapel at Castle Hill. We hope you enjoy today's service. Welcome. My name's Francis, and I'm delighted to be here to lead in this service of morning prayer. Let's begin by singing a hymn. I invite you to join with me in this prayer of confession. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have strayed from your ways like lost sheep. We have left undone what we ought to have done, and we have done what we ought not to have done. We have followed our own ways and the desires of our own hearts. We have broken your holy laws. Yet, good Lord, have mercy on us. Restore those who are penitent, according to your promises, declared to all people 
in Jesus Christ our Lord. And grant, merciful Father, for his sake, that we may live a godly and obedient life. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy has promised forgiveness of sins to all who turn to him with hearty repentance and true faith, have mercy on you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let's sing together now, The Lord's My Shepherd. now have our Bible reading and devotion. Our reading today comes from James chapter 2, verses 14 to 26. What good is it, my brothers, if a man claims to have faith but has no deeds? Can such faith save him? Suppose a brother or sister is without clothes and daily food. If one of you says to him, Go, I wish you well. Keep warm and well fed. But does nothing about his physical needs, what good is it? In the same way, faith by itself, if it is not accompanied by action, is dead. But someone will say, you have faith, I have deeds. Show me your faith without deeds, and I will show you my faith by what I do. You believe that there is one God. Good. Even the demons believe that and shudder. You foolish man! Do you want evidence that faith without deeds is useless? Was not our ancestor Abraham considered righteous for what he did when he offered his son Isaac on the altar? You see that his faith and his actions were working together, and his faith was made complete by what he did. And the scripture was fulfilled that says, Abraham believed God, and it was credited to him as righteousness. And he was called God's friend. You see, a person is justified by what he does, and not by faith alone. In the same way, 
Was not even Rahab the prostitute considered righteous for what she did when she gave lodging to the spies and sent them off in a different direction? As the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without deeds is dead. Hi there, today we continue our series in James and we look at James chapter 2 verses 14 to 26. It could be called How to Have Real Faith because when you put the word real in front of everything, the advertisers want to sell you more stuff. They say, oh, this is real coffee or this is real leather or this is 5% real fruit juice. James in the Bible speaks to us about how to have real faith. And James talked to us about authentic believers and fake believers. Now, what we need to do first, though, is to see what this passage isn't saying. For many people use this passage to show that you have to work your way into heaven. So it's important that we understand what the Bible says to us about how we do get to heaven and where good works fit in. The entire New Testament teaches that we are saved by faith alone. And James comes along and says, no, it's faith and works. Now, what's right? Who's right? The fact is, both things work together. One is talking about one area of life where James focuses on the fruit of salvation, where other parts of the Bible speaks about who we are. Jesus said, by their fruit, you will know them. Other parts of the Bible are talking about how you know whether you are a Christian. James is talking about how to show that you are a Christian, how to behave like a believer. Now, how do I show that I'm a believer in Jesus Christ? James says that there are five ways to show that you have the real thing, if you like. And he gives us five steps or principles. And the first one is in verse 14. He says, real faith is not just something you say or claim. Look at verse 14. What good is it, my brothers and sisters, if someone claims to have faith but has no deeds? Can such faith save them? Notice that it says claims to have faith. There are a lot of people who claim to be Christians. But James says that there is more involved to being a Christian than just claiming to be one. James is saying real faith is not just something you say. Do you know people who claim to be Christians? but you don't see any evidence in their lives. Being a Christian doesn't mean that we are perfect, but our lives should reflect our faith in Jesus Christ. People should see a difference. Secondly, James says, real faith is not just something that you feel. Look at verses 15 and 16. Suppose a brother or sister is without clothes and daily food. If one of you says to him, go, I wish you well, keep warm and well fed, but does nothing about his or her physical needs. What good is it? Faith is more than just emotion, what you feel for someone or something. You can be emotionally moved, but never act upon it, can't you? There's actually a great Charlie Brown cartoon where Charlie Brown and Linus are inside and it's snowing outside, and Snoopy is outside on his dog kennel, shivering with an empty dog food bowl. And Charlie Brown and Linus... Well, they're talking, they're saying how hard and how sad it is for Snoopy. She must be so cold and miserable. They say, yeah, we really should do something about it. And Linus said, yes, we really should do something about it. Okay, let's do something about it. And they walk outside, they walk over to Snoopy and say, be of good cheer, Snoopy. And then they turn around and walk back inside and leave Snoopy in the snow. Not very loving. James is saying, what good is it if you see someone in need and say, oh, I really feel for you? James says our faith is more than just words. It's more than just feelings. Real faith takes initiative. It wants to give. Who can count on you in a crisis? How many people could contact you if they were upset? Who would seek you out? In James verse 17 He says, in the same way, faith by itself, if it's not accompanied by action, is dead. James is saying that real faith is visible. You can see it. If you are a Christian, then people ought to be able to see it. Faith is a bit like calories. 
You can't see them, but you can see the results. We can't see faith, but we can sure see the results of faith in Jesus. There's a phrase that goes, if you were arrested for being a Christian, would there be enough evidence to convict you? If we wear the label Christian, then others should see the label in action. And we need to have a real faith, not a phony faith. It's not just intellectual knowledge. It means commitment. In James verse 26, he says, As the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without deeds is dead. Can I encourage us all to appreciate our faith in Jesus and to thank God for saving us, but likewise may we be asking God to help us demonstrate our faith through the way that we show love to other people. Jesus said, a new commandment I give you, love one another as I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. So I'm hoping today you might look for people to show that love and to show your faith in Jesus Christ in action. But I'm going to pray and ask God that he might help us in that regard. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we do thank you for the Lord Jesus Christ. We pray that you would help us to show our love and our faith in action. Help us to be people that demonstrate to others that we love the Lord Jesus through the way that we love them as well. Help us to do that today and some, find some people that we can love and show great care to. For we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Rock of ages cleft for me, let me hide myself in thee. Let the water and the blood from thy riven side which flowed me of sin the double cure. Cleanse me from its guilt and power. Not the labors of my hands can fulfill the Lord's demands. Could my zeal no respite know? Could my tears forever flow? All for sin could not atone. Thou must save and thou alone. Nothing in my hand I bring, simply to thy cross I cling. Naked come to thee for dress, helpless look to thee for grace. While I to the fountain fly, Wash me, Savior, or I die. While I draw this fleeting breath, when my eyelids close in death, when I soar through tracks unknown, see thee on thy judgment throne, Rock of ages cleft for me, let me hide myself in thee. Let's come before God now in prayer. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let's pray together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. A prayer of thanksgiving. Most merciful Father, we humbly thank you for all your gifts so freely bestowed on us, for life and health and safety, for power to work and leisure to rest, for all that is beautiful in creation and in the lives of people. We praise and glorify your holy name. But above all, we thank you for your spiritual mercies in Christ Jesus our Lord, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. Fill our hearts with all joy and peace in believing through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let's sing together, O God our help in ages past. Our hope for years to come, our shelter from the stormy blast, and our eternal home under the shadow of your throne. Your saints have dwelt secure. Sufficient is your arm alone, and our defense is sure. Before the hills in honor stood, our earth received her frame. From everlasting, to endless is the same. A thousand ages in thy sight are like an evening cloud, short as the watch that ends the night before the Oh God, our help in ages past, our hope for years to come. Be our defense while troubles last, and our eternal home. I invite you now to join together in the grace. Together, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Well, thank you for joining us in our service today. And we hope that you can be with us next time.